Okay, so in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at the Coldbore CL60 LED light. And I've already used it on a proper job to make this, but more on that in a minute. I know it looks a little bit weird because I've left it in the shot here, but I just thought it would be good for you guys to see you know, where it is relative to me, because in a minute we'll go in and we'll have a little play around with the, the strength settings, the effect settings, so you'll be able to get a real idea of what it can actually do. We'll do it in kind of real time. Full disclosure, Coldboard did send me this light, but if you've seen any other videos on my channel, you know, I don't like just accepting stuff willy-nilly. I do get offered a fair few bits now, but I really only like to actually take stuff on that A, I need, B, I think that I'm actually gonna use, and C, I think that, you know, from judging other reviews, I think are gonna be all right anyway. With that in mind, I can still say what I want, and as much as I do really like the light, there are a few little niggles with it as well, which we'll come to in a minute. Oh, by the way, I'm also using this on a, I think it's like a 36 inch softbox, octobox thing, and it's got two layers of diffusion in it. So that's probably gonna sort of take a little bit of strength out of it. But again, I thought I'd use it like this because it's probably how most of you guys are gonna be using it as well. So talking about real world tests, I've actually already used this light um, before I even made this review, I actually used it, I think it was last week, for a client of mine that's an alloy wheel company. And I've done some really wicked like 360 product videos, as well as just generally using it to get some nice footage, photos of their wheels, their products, for use on all their social media channels. I've also used it in my little garage studio to do a few portraits as well. And it's quite nice, you know, where you're not using flash photography, you know, you can see exactly how the light as you move it around is, is gonna look differently on your subject. So that's been quite sort of refreshing to use. And I think it worked really well. Again, like, you know, hopefully I'm showing you some example photos here. But yeah, really impressed with just being able to take photographs with it as well. Okay, so let's have a quick play around the light, shall we? In real time, let's get the app open. And at the minute the light is at 1%, I'm filming at f1.4 and I've needed to crank up to 100th of a second shutter speed just to deal with the 1%. So it shows you kind of how bright it is. But let's bang it right up to 100% and I'm gonna go well blown out there. And let's just see what f-stop I'd need to be at to kind of balance that out. Let's go down to a 50th of a second again. I've got my zebras set to 70, give or take five, just to try and get the skin tones correct. Oh yeah, somewhere in between F7 and F6.3 to get, to get my skin exposed properly again. But anyway, let's just stick that back to F1.4 again. Okay, and we'll get this back down to 1%. Oh yeah, let's have a quick little look at the temperature control as well. So at the minute we're at 5600 Kelvin. Let's go all the way down to 2700 Kelvin. And then all the way up to 6500 Kelvin. And let's just go back again, 56. That's what I've got my white balance set to at the moment. Going over to the effects. Um, right, lightning. And I'm assuming on all of these, you know, if you push the rate up, it's going to get a bit more, a bit more crazy. Intensity, let's just bang that right up. That seems to be the brightness by the looks of it. Okay, yeah, let's put those back down again. Have a quick look at bonfire. Okay, that kind of, let's just turn it down again a bit more. Flash. Oh, there we go. Candle light. That doesn't really look like a candle to me, but whatever. Pulsing. Okay, not sure that I'd use that. Faulty bulb. Right, okay. And then back to lightning again. In fact, I'm sure there are actually more effects. Sorry, let me just get this back to normal. 
I'm sure it's supposed to do more effects to be honest, but I'm thinking maybe you can only operate those via the back of the unit, which is a little bit weird. I don't know why they're not all on the app, but there we go. You know, I thought we'd have just sort of a proper look at them. Anyway, moving swiftly on, I ain't gonna go into like loads of detail about all the specs and stuff. I'll put them up on the screen now so that you've got them in front of you so that you can have a look. But the main ones that stood out for me were the weight. This thing is 550 grams. And I mean, the closest thing that I can compare it to is probably the Godox SL60, because that's in a similar kind of price bracket. And that weighs 1.6 kilograms compared to this at 550 grams. That's quite a weight saving, which, you know, again, I like to keep all my kit nice and simple, nice and light. So this definitely fits the bill. I also like the fact that it's bi-color, which that Godox light isn't. It's 60 watts, which is enough for what I need it for. It's got an app which lets you control all the settings. I did find that a little bit finicky to get it connected. It took me a couple of goes, but once it was connected, it seemed to work fine. The cost as well, obviously, is a big one. It's 160 quid, which I think is pretty reasonable. I think, again, going back to the Godox SL60 for comparison, that is 130 quid. But for this, purely with the weight saving alone, the fact you can operate it via its own app, I think they're sort of big enough pros to be worth that extra 30 quid. Another feature that I can't really test is the fact that these units you can interlock. So you can connect sort of several of them all up into what Cold will call like a power cube so that you're just getting like a bigger light source. Again, obviously you need multiple ones of them, which I don't have, but I'll flash a picture up on the screen so you guys can be getting an idea of how that system looks. Oh, and it also comes with a nice little padded bag, which is quite a nice little touch. In that bag, you've got the USB-C charger. Um, I believe you can also charge this from using like a power bank, you know, as long as it's got a USB-C cable. It's got the bracket in there to attach it to a light stand, a Bowen's S-mount and a light dish. So that's all the stuff that I like about the light. There was a couple of little niggly bits that, you know, whilst aren't deal breakers, it's probably worth mentioning. The first of which being that I just thought it would have been a nice touch if on the bracket there was a little hole and a tightener bit where you could just pop a cheap umbrella through. You know, for anyone out there that's on more of a budget and you've not yet got round to getting soft boxes and that kind of stuff, I mean, I'm sure you could probably get some sort of light stand attachment that would do the trick, but I feel like they could have done that with sort of no added cost. The second thing being, and this is a real minor gripe, is that the dials on the back of the unit, I found to be, you know, they feel a little bit plasticky, the dials, like, you know, I didn't find them overly responsive. Although I have found out that, you know, by pushing them, they're actually buttons as well. And that will increase the power, like sort of in 25% chunks and stuff, which is actually quite handy. But yeah, they just felt a little bit plasticky. Again, I'm not expecting miracles on a unit that costs this much money. So it's just minor bits that I've said, it's, again, it's nothing that would put me off and I don't think it's anything that would need to put anyone else off out there. So yeah, I hope that helps you all out there, you know. If you're in the market for one of these lights, I don't think you're gonna get anything quite this small and this powerful for this kind of price point. So, you know, I really would recommend it. And if I thought it was shit, I wouldn't recommend it, but no, I think it's a decent light. So yeah, hopefully this will help you if you're, if you're doing your research at the minute. But yeah, we'll leave it there. Please like and subscribe if you found the video enjoyable. I've got plenty of other videos on the channel you can go and check out. I've got some presets for sale if you'd like to help support the channel. Um, other than that, I will see you in the next one. Cheers.